All right, I believe I should be recording now, hopefully. Um, perfect. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for being on. Today is, what is today? The 29th? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, we are almost at the end of 2015, and you guys, I don't know about you, but I am just, I'm excited. I'm excited because I'm ready for a fresh, clean slate, and as awesome as 2015 has been, I have had a lot of struggles. I'm sure you guys have also. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, bumps in the road and goals that I've set that I've missed. And what I love about a new year is just having that clean slate, having that fresh start. So tonight I want to share with you our top 10 tips so that you can really make 2016 um, the best year you've ever had. And, um, you know, I'm going to go through a couple different things with you guys. And I'm just, I'm just really excited to dive into this um, because I think that my theme for 2016 is going to be um, be intentional. That's going to be my motto, be intentional, because I think that that's the number one thing that I've learned in 2015. If you have a goal, if you want to make something happen, if you want to just get your business started, you can't just hope it will happen, wish it will happen, or, um, you know, hope that the perfect time will come in your life um, so that you just have magical time that you can start working your business. No, you guys, like things will never just fall into your lap. You have to be intentional. You have to make time. You have to make a plan for your goals and you have to be intentional about it. So that is my theme for 2016. And I'm just excited to dive into that with you guys um, a little bit more tonight on our call. So first off, um, I have this beautiful picture of Shalene Johnson. Isn't she just like gorgeous? I wish I was as beautiful as her when I'm her age. Oh my goodness. Um, but she says, smart people take notes. So if you do not have a notepad, if you don't have your notepad open on your phone, if you're not using something to take notes, make sure that you go and do that because smart people take notes and being able to look back on this stuff and really have, um, have this all down is going to help you, especially because there's 10 specific action items basically that I'm going to be giving you. So make sure you're taking notes. Okay. I want to make sure that my, um, can I see the chat here? Okay. Can someone just type in the chat box? It does, is the little recording button on? There's a little, I don't know if you guys can see it from your end, maybe not. Yes, okay, perfect, thank you, sorry. Okay, I just wanna make sure it was recording because I can't see the little red light from my view. So, okay, sorry, let's keep going. So, um, first off, you guys, I've kind of split this up into three goal setting tips, three game planning tips, and four action items. Really, um, all 10 of them are gonna be action items, but I just kind of split this up um, because I think it's important to kind of cover all parts of this when we're talking about um, setting goals and making sure that 2016 is a great year for you. Um, but first, before we go into all of that, I wanna kind of review some important things because it is coming to the end of the year. We have a lot of stuff going on. So um, there's a lot of announcements and I just wanna make sure you guys are all up to date on this stuff. Some of you may know all about this. Um, some of you might not. So that's why I just wanted to make sure I share with you. So first off, Wednesday, December 30th, which is tomorrow, is the Emerald deadline for both the volume boot camp that we're gonna be starting on Monday, as well as uh, to get leads for January, which you guys, you wanna get leads in January. It's the most important month of the year really it's like the biggest month of the year um, people are gonna be ready to get started on their health and fitness journey so if they're watching and they love that infomercial with autumn and Tom Bergeron they're gonna hop on it right so make sure that you um, get yourself locked in for leads and um, like I said on Monday also kicks off our volume boot camp which is gonna be freaking amazing um, I I did a little I, I can't explain this before I don't know if you guys have seen this or not but um, the volume boot camp is gonna be awesome you guys, um, it's really just going to teach you all about how to start to build your income with your business, how to start to understand what volume means and what is PV and what is TV and how do I grow my cycle bonus and what is a cycle bonus and what's capping out and what is a, you know, why do I want a second business center? How do I get my second business center? All these things that you've probably have heard and you're like, what does this mean? These are all things that are going to help you really um, grow your income and grow your residual income over time. And 
you know, the volume boot camp is going to help you kind of understand all of that stuff, learn more about it, because I know it kind of is just like this far off stuff that's really confusing, really foreign, and you just kind of are like, well, whatever, I'll deal with it when I absolutely have to or when my coach, you know, can help me with this, right? So um, hopefully after this boot camp, you guys will just have a lot better idea of how this works and how you can really start to maximize the compensation plan in 2016, okay? Um, so that kicks off on Monday. Next Saturday is Super Saturday. If you guys um, aren't registered for your local Super Saturday, make sure you do that ASAP. Um, it might be either Saturday, Sunday, sometimes they have it on Friday. You're just going to have to check and see when your local one is going to be. Um, you can go into your um, Coach Online office and click on the News and Training tab and then um, click on what is it events yeah events and then um click on super saturday and you can pull up a map of all of the super saturday events that are going on across the country so make sure that you look up where your local super saturday is get registered for it because um super saturday is awesome you guys it's a great way for you to connect with your local team and just um you know build your momentum as the new year starts okay so also, um, mark your calendar. Monday, January 11th is when the new Cafe Latte Shakeology flavor is going to be out. I'm super excited. Um, I need to call and cancel my HD order because I want to get this stuff right when it comes out on Monday because I'm super excited about it. If you haven't heard, um, they released this at Leadership back in October. October. Um, it's a brand new Shakeology flavor. It's different from all the others it uses. It uses um, the entire coffee fruit, not just the coffee bean. Um, so it uses both the, the super fruit and the bean, I guess. Um, I don't know all the details. I'm going to have to look it up and research it a little bit more or maybe listen to this Inside Shakeology podcast because um, I'm super excited about this. Everybody loves their coffee, right? I think it's going to be a big hit. Um, and there's also going to be a new triple combo Shakeology box coming out. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but it's going to come with eight packets of chocolate, eight packets of vanilla, and eight packets of the cafe latte. So that's going to be a new option that you can offer to your customers and coaches when they get signed up um, with Shakeology or a challenge pack. Okay. So um, moving on, Monday, January 18th is when registration opens for Team Cup, which is going to be next, or not next month, almost next month, um, February. February is going to be Team Cup. Okay. And so as you guys know, Team Cup is awesome. It's such a great way to just continue to Keep your momentum going um, in the new year and just get some awesome prizes, right? Um, I love Team Cup, and this is just a really fun, um, really, really fun competition and a really great way for you to push hard with your business, okay? So registration is going to open for that on January 18th, and then um, Team Cup is going to kick off February 1st, okay? Um, oh, Ashley raised her hand. Ashley, did you have a question? Is there a way that I can open the chat box? Oh, here. Hold on. Let me see. Did you have a question, Ashley? It said you raised your hand. No? Okay. Well, raise your hand again if you have a question. Maybe it was just an, on accident. Um, anyways, so Team Cup. Yes, January 18th. Um, okay, so January Challenge Packs, you guys. I don't know if you knew this or not, but they are live today, or they should be by the end of today. Um, technically, it's not the end of the day yet. But um, for those of you who don't know, oops, my little straight through things didn't come on here. Sorry. Um, but Hammer and Chisel is on sale for $140, is that right? Is it 140? No, I think this is wrong. Sorry. Hammer and Chisel is on sale for $160. It's normally $180. Excuse me. It's the same sale that was happening in December. So that's just continuing through January. And then the 21 Day Fix and 21 Day Fix Extreme are also going to be back on sale for $140. Um, normally they're $160, which I'm excited about. Everybody loves 21 Day Fix. Um, and then the Kickstarts are also going to be on sale. So those are $180. Normally they are $205. And then the Three Day Refresh Challenge Pack is also going to be on sale. That one I'm excited about too. Um, it's 140 instead of 160. So basically, they get the entire kit for 10 bucks with uh, the purchase of Shakeology. That is super awesome. So um, those are the challenge pack sales. If you guys didn't know about that for January, um, but mark that down. Make sure you know that. And as I said, they should be live today. So they said that they're going to start um, releasing the challenge pack sales a couple days early, um, which is really awesome, right? So um, it should be live. If not tonight, um, I would check in your mobile app or in your back office tomorrow. It should be live, okay? 
So now let's get into it, you guys. I'm super excited to jump into our topic, which is our top 10 tips to make 2016 the best yet. So let's get into it. Let's do this. So number one, my number one tip is to reflect on 2015, okay? So I want you to sit down and maybe make a list, um, write down these questions or think about these questions and really reflect on how this year went for you with your business. Um, what did you accomplish? What things did you make happen? Um, and what are some things that maybe you didn't accomplish that you did set out to do um, at the beginning of 2015? Um, what did you improve upon? What's a strength that you, that you really um, got better at this year? Um, and what's something that you really feel like you need to continue to work on? Um, how intentional were you this year? You guys are going to hear me say the word intentional over and over. So um, just get ready for that. But how intentional were you this year? Were you intentional about planning your time and making time for your business? Or um, did you just kind of fit it in when it, when it was convenient for you or fit it in when, you know, the time was better for you or whatever. Um, and how do you plan to change that moving forward? Do you want to be, um, a lot more intentional in 2016? Do you want to start to treat your business like a business? Um, these are all things that you can start to think about because I really think that if you sit back and really just look at both the things that you have been able to, um, accomplish and the things that you are, still working on, it's a good way for you to just look at your progress, look at the things that you did, and really just see where you can take it above and beyond in 2016, right? And I think it also just gives you a better idea of the things that you need to work on, right? So, um, you know, maybe it, it'll help you pinpoint some new goals that you can set for yourself moving forward if you haven't thought about them yet. Um, but, but reflecting back on 2015, it's going to be a really big step to help you just get started with this process. Get started with making 2016 great before it even starts, right? So number two, I want you to recommit to your vision. And you guys, if you haven't yet, um, I want you to think about this. Have you cre created a vision for yourself and for your team? And if the answer to that is no, I first want you guys to make sure that you go and watch this call. Um, it's uh, Sarah Tri's team, tri team triceps call from, it was, I think it was just a couple weeks ago. But um, Josh was on and he talked all about pulling your team together with vision. And it, and it was just a really great, call that helps you kind of figure out what your vision is and how to put your vision together. So, um, you know, you don't have to write this down or you can write, write down this URL. Otherwise, if you go to Sarah's YouTube page and just type in pulling your team together with vision, you'll be able to pull up um, the video. But you guys, this is a really great call that'll help you kind of create your vision if you haven't done that yet. Okay. But that's something that's really important and something you got to make sure that you do. Uh, because you've got to have a big picture for your business. Okay. You've got to have um, something that you're working towards, you've got to have an idea of what it is that you want. Because if you don't have a goal, if you don't have an idea or, or a vision that you're working towards, then what are you going to be working on? Like, where, where are you going to go, right? If you have no, no um, destination or place that you are working towards, you will have, um, you have nowhere to go, really. Okay, so without a vision, you really will have no desire or motivation to achieve your goal. And you guys, that's the truth. I mean, I really think that your vision can be like your fuel to your fire, you know? So I've told this story before, but when I was first getting started with coaching and decided that I wanted to go all in and quit my full-time job, I started to create this vision for myself of what my day would look like start to finish as a full-time coach. I would wake up without an alarm clock. I would be able to go take Miley for a walk and, um, you know, get my, get my workout done, not at 4 45 AM because I wasn't scrambling to get to my job and sit in traffic. Um, I would go sit out on my balcony with a cup of coffee and Miley would be sitting on my lap and we'd have a blanket and I'd be reading my personal development book. And then I would sit and, um, you know what I mean? Like I would literally map it out and I had this picture, this vision in my head of what my day would look like as a, perf as a, a full-time coach. And you guys, that literally just drove just drove me forward so much. It made me um, want to keep working. On those days when I felt like lazy, felt super lazy, or felt like I didn't want to, you know, get my invites in, or I knew I needed to, you know, get started with a project or something that was procrastinating. You guys, that is what drove me forward. I was like, I'm never going to be able to make that vision happen if I don't get this stuff done. If I don't pick up and do my vital behaviors today, if I don't get my invites bites in today, or if I don't go do my workout, you know what I'm saying? So it's not just a picture of, you know, what could be, or, um, you know, just something that you want, right? 
it's got to be um, something that really just calls to you, a call to become something more. Um, I drove or I uh, got that quote from Darren Hardy and I just loved it. And it's the truth. I mean, that's what that vision of being a full-time coach was for me. It was my call to become something more than somebody just sitting at my desk job, typing in numbers to a spreadsheet all day, having to sit in boring ass meetings for hours and want to shoot myself in the face. Right. I knew that I had more that I could be offering this world. And I knew that I wasn't born to be sitting, hating my life eight hours plus out of my day. Okay. So that vision was that call to me that I had something more that I was working towards and that drove me forward every single day. So you've got to make sure that you have your vision, you guys. Okay. So number three, I want you to revise your goals from 2015. Okay. So we all probably set some goals for, for um, this year, right? So it's time to kind of, um, we, we've already reflected back on that, right? You've already looked at the things that you wanted to achieve and what you weren't able to achieve. So now it's time to really revise your goals and see what you can do um, to, to set new goals for 2016. So I think that the best way to do that is to set 10 goals for yourself. And however many um, within your 10 goals you want to make within these categories, it doesn't matter. But I think that you should include um, all five of these, I guess, quote unquote categories um, in your goals. I, I think that's important because you need to make sure that you're not just only making goals about um, your business and you're not making sure that you're taking care of your personal um, life and your health and your relationships, right? So I just want to make sure that you're covering all aspects of your life, not just one or the other. So, um, you know, these are the five areas that I think are most important when you're setting your goals, your health, um, your personal, personal things that you want to achieve, your business, financial goals, and then of course, relationship goals. So um, especially for those of you that are married, you know, uh, or in a serious relationship. So um, I'm actually going to share with you guys my 10 goals. I set these um, and, and wanted to share so you guys have an example and can see what I'm talking about. So my 10 goals for 2016, I am a top 50 elite 15 star diamond coach. Um, I am, or I have five personally sponsored elite or premier coaches. I am an executive leader. If you guys don't know what that, that is, that's on the leadership ladder. Um, that's at the highest rung of the leadership ladder. So that's what I'm shooting for in 2016. Um, I'm consistently earning $3,000 a week in team cycle bonuses. Um, that's one thing I really want to focus on this year is growing my team cycle bonus. Um, we have saved enough for a down payment on a house. My husband and I want to get the hell out of our apartment, get the hell out of Kent, Washington. Um, I have paid off all my debt except for my student loans. Um, I'm certified in size. This is something that I've really been wanting to do. And um, it's kind of scary for me because I've never taught any classes but I always loved going to classes I love going to Zumba and it was just my fun time right and size I think is like 10 times more fun than Zumba so like why the hell not um, so that's something that I'm gonna push myself to do in 2016 it's scary but if it's scary then you know what that's what I need to do right um, I have attended one personal development conference and um, that's something that my coach Lauren really inspired me to do I would love to go to a Tony Robbins conference um, you know unleash the power within or something like that um, but I really want to work on growing myself and investing in my personal development a lot more next year um, I want to have a new hobby outside of work and coaching I'm a little bit of a crazy person and but my husband and I are also like super introverts and we just like don't go out so I want to start a new hobby I don't know what it is yet but I want to figure out a hobby for myself um, so that I can have my thing that I can start doing um, and stop being such a hobbit <laughs> um, and number 10 I have completed five programs start to finish so I want to um, you know I, I don't really want to set a weight loss goal for myself because I feel like um, I've reached my I mean I'm in the healthy weight range for um, my height and my age and all that stuff so I don't want to set a weight goal um, I'm glad that I'm in a healthy weight range that's all that really matters to me um, so that's kind of what my new health or you know weight goal is um, is to make sure that I'm completing programs start to finish and that really helps me with mental behavior number two right being a product of the product so when you complete programs start to finish and have that before and after for people you guys like there's no way that your business will ever fail your business will continue to move forward when you continue to have those transformations and those before and afters and that's the great thing about this journey is that it's gonna be a journey forever you're never gonna not be on this journey okay you're always gonna be able to be better than you were last year so even though I've lost 80 pounds even though I've been doing this for two years now even though I've been you know using these programs for two years now I haven't set foot in the gym in over two years you guys I'm continually 
pushing myself and getting results. Like hammer and chisel just came out and it's kicking my ass. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if anybody's butt is always sore, but mine is. Um, but I just love that. I'm always being pushed. And that's a great thing. Each body's always going to be pushing us. They're going to be coming out with new stuff that's bigger, better. And, um, that's why I just, I just love what we do. So anyways, these are my 10, um, 10 goals. Um, and you guys see, I wrote them in the present tense. I said, I am a top 50 elite 15 star diamond coach. Okay. Um, I, I say it in the present tense so that I can say that to myself. I can read these over and over and I can not just, you know, set this as a goal, but I can really believe that I am a top 50 elite 15 star diamond coach, whether it says that in my back office or not, that's what I am. And that's how I'm going to work. And that's how I'm going to treat my business. And you know what, sooner or later, that goal actually will happen. Okay. So set those in present tense, make sure you're covering, um, all of these 10 areas. You guys, I think it's or 10 areas, excuse me, five areas, um, 10 goals. You can kind of mix and match however you want, but I think it's so important to make sure you're covering all those things and setting those goals for yourself now so that you really have, um, just so you have some support on your vision so that you know what it is that you're working towards next year. Okay. So number four, you need to determine your 2016 non-negotiables. Okay. Um, once again, you guys, this is all about being intentional. So what are your non-negotiable goals that you are going to make happen no matter what? Um, is that success club five or success club 10? Is that uh, making sure that you are running at least one um, challenge group a month and promoting that every single month or running a free clean eating challenge group the first week of every month? Are you going to commit to that every single month non-negotiable? Are you going to attend every event that you qualify for? Okay. Are you going to invest back in your business and get into, get yourself to events so that you can really just keep your momentum going and, um, be around the team and just, um, I think just events are just an amazing thing that you need to make a part of your business. Um, are you going to read a new personal development book every month? I mean, I don't know what your non-negotiables are going to be. These are going to be, um, just some examples, you guys, but you've got to determine what your goals are that you're going to make happen no matter what. Okay. You have to be intentional. I'm going to say this over and over, but it's the truth. Be otherwise, these non-negotiables, and I'm going to say quote unquote non-negotiables, are going to turn into, meh, I don't have to. Okay? That's what they're going to turn into. Meh, I don't have to. And we don't, that's not the way that you should be treating these goals. Okay? So has that ever happened to you over the last 12 months in your business? Be completely honest. Did you tell yourself that you are going to hit success club every single month in um, 2015? And were there some months where it came down to the end of the month, you had success club zero and you said, meh, I missed it last month. I don't have to. I mean, honestly, be honest with yourself, you guys. If you thought that, it's okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to call you out. I'm not saying names to anybody. I'm just saying that that's what happens when you're not intentional. That's not what happens when you don't set these goals and make them non-negotiable. Okay. So for me, I don't care who it is, what it is, what's going on. Success Club 10 is my goal every single month. And that's the first goal that I wrap up because it's the goal that I'm going to make happen no matter what. I'm going to help my five people because that's why I'm here. It's the foundation for this business. It's the foundation for everything, you know? And I preach this to you guys every day, right? Do we not talk about freaking Success Club all the time? What kind of a leader would I be to you guys if I didn't hit Success Club myself, okay? So there's so many reasons why I hit Success Club. You guys, it's a non-negotiable to me. I don't go a month without hitting it. Um, I haven't since I've been all in with my business. Okay. And I'm not saying this to be like, whoa, I hit success goal all the time. I'm saying this because that's the way that you've got to treat these non-negotiable goals. You have to think about it. You've got to be intentional. Otherwise they're not going to be non-negotiables. You're going to say, oh, this is a non-negotiable for me. I'm hitting success club. But then at the end of the month, when it gets hard or when you haven't hit your goal and you just kind of like roll over because you weren't intentional during the month prior and you weren't intentional about your business, you guys, that's what happens. It becomes an optional goal, not a non-negotiable goal. Okay. So you have to decide those things now go into 2016, knowing what you are going to achieve every single month, no matter what, set the expectation for yourself, set the bar high. Okay. I think that's so important. Once again, being intentional. Otherwise, if you don't set the bar high, you have no, nothing to shoot for. You have nothing to really um, aim for, right? You have no, nothing to really push yourself. So you've got to make sure that you just figure those things out. Okay. Number five, create monthly mini goals. Okay. So some of you guys maybe are setting some long-term goals. Like maybe you want to be a successful all-star or an all-star legend, or maybe you want to be elite 
or maybe you want to be premier, or maybe you want to start to earn, you know, a thousand dollars a week in your business, or you want to be a five-star diamond coach or whatever it is, right? You have these big goals that you've set for yourself. Those 10 goals that I just showed you before, but sometimes that can be a little overwhelming, right? You're going to be like, uh, okay, I know I said I want to be, you know, X, Y, Z, or I want to do this, but how am I going to make that happen? You are going to do that by creating smaller incremental monthly mini goals because that is going to help you kind of break this down make it more manageable not so overwhelming so that you can continuously work towards those bigger goals without kind of stressing out and freaking out about how much you got to do you know what i'm saying you got a smaller um a lot more uh, achievable i i guess you could say goal right in front of you um that will that will help you um concentrate on what you got to do now so that you can make that bigger goal in the long term happen as well. Does that make sense to you guys? So I want you to start by looking back at those 10 goals that you set before. Okay. And you're going to start to reverse engineer them, figure out the steps you've got to take to make those happen. Okay. Think backwards. And by listing out those steps and the things that you've got to make happen, then kind of split that up throughout your months. Right? So here's an example right here. Um, say you want to be diamond in three months, diamond by March 31st. This actually could be 100% achievable by every single one of you that's listening to this call because I think anybody, whether you signed up as a coach um, five minutes before this team call, you could be diamond uh, by March 31st, okay? So um, anybody could relate to this. Now, all you gotta do, break that down into mini goals, okay? So maybe your January goal is to focus on finding six new coaches for your business. And out of those six new coaches, at least one of them, at least one, I wish I should say one to two, one to two of them are going to be business builders. They say, yeah, I'm ready. I want to run a bit, run a business. I want to help other people. And those are going to be the ones that you're going to help, help get to Emerald. Okay. Don't focus on diamond diamond by March 31st. I got to hit diamond by March 31st. No focus on, I've got to get my six coaches and at least my, my two business builders. I should have said two here. Cause you want to have a little bit of buffer. You don't have just one, one business builder. Right. So six coaches out of those six coaches, you're going to find two business builders. You guys, you could even break that down into weekly goals, right? So if that's six coaches, um, over a month, what is that like one to two coaches a week? So then maybe you break that down and make that into your weekly goal. You know what I mean? Reverse engineer this and break it down into smaller goals, map it out, get out a big calendar, get one of those big monthly calendars and write those mini goals in so that you can focus on those smaller goals along the way. Okay. And not be so freaked out by like, Oh shoot, I got to get to diamond by March 31st. What do I got to do? Uh, and then you're all frazzled and you don't know what to concentrate on. You're all over the place. Right? So, you know, breaking it down is going to make it a lot more manageable. Okay. Maybe in February, after you've got your six coaches, your focus then in February is going to find, it's going to be to find four more new coaches for your team with at least one or two of them going to be business builders also. Okay. I think that's totally achievable for all of you guys because January and February are the months where people are ready to take action with their health and fitness. Right. So I don't think it's going to be as hard. Um, some of you are like, wait, I've never, I've only, I've only recruited, you know, one coach a month. How am I going to find six? Um, you know, once again, you guys, you can set any goal for yourself. This is just an example. Um, but really it's just going to take like kind of breaking it down into smaller steps along the way. Okay. So finding four coaches with one to two business builders and then, um, your March goal to get those coaches on each leg, help them get to Emerald. Okay. Set up a game plan for your coaches, just like you set it for yourself. So maybe you set up an Emerald goal date for them and then you create weekly um, mini goals for them to hit Emerald. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to back it up, take it one step at a time, um, break it down into smaller parts. And I think it makes it just 10 times more achievable. You have a small goal to achieve um, and in a small period of time, can make that happen. Boom. And then you're on to the next step. You know what I'm saying? That's the way that you're going to be able to really get your goal, goals going, get your momentum going too. Because every time you hit a win, every time you hit a goal, make something happen in your business that just adds more fuel to your fire. Okay. So smaller incremental goals and also making sure you, you attach deadlines to this. So like I said, in the um, example before your January goal. So that means by January 31st, you have six coaches with two business builders, right? Um, make sure you have a deadline because that's going to keep you accountable. And remember, if you're not intentional about this, once again, it will not happen. If you're not intentional about this, it won't happen. Okay. You have to be intentional. You got to set these goals. You got to uh, write them down in your planner. You got to get up every day and show up in your business and make them happen. Okay. You guys. 
Number six, develop your business plan. Okay. Your business plan. What do I mean by that? You're probably like, wait, what business plan? Huh? Yes. I said business plan because I'm telling you guys right now, you are a business owner from here on out and you've got to start treating it like a business. You, I mean, I say this over and over, but I really think that having a business owner mindset is going to either make or break you having a business owner mindset versus not having a business owner mindset will make or break you, um, with your ability to reach your goals and to make things happen. Okay. So once again, also, let me just note that this is really directed towards those of you who say, yeah, I'm a business builder, Alexa. I want to quit my job. I want to pay off debt. I want to help people every single month. I want to, you know, do X, Y, Z. I got big things that I want to achieve. I'm talking to you guys. Okay. If you're a discount coach or a hobby coach and you're watching this and you're like, what you, you're freaking me out, girl. Uh, don't worry. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about all of you guys out there who are probably watching this call because you would not watch a call about how to make 2016 the best um, you're yet if you weren't um, planning on setting some big goals for yourself, right? So um, I just want to make that little side note. If you got big goals, this is for you, okay? I'm talking to you. So this is what I mean by a business plan, you guys. You got to create your power hour. You've got to set your business hours every single week, and you've got to commit to that business owner mindset. Okay. So I have all these, I've done all these calls and things about how to create your power hour. Um, Sarah try has build your business in 20, which is like the best call there is about creating your power hour for your week, for your month, for your day. Um, so make sure you watch that. If you haven't already, um, go to Sarah's YouTube and it's build your biz in 20. If you've never watched that, go watch it. Um, but you've got to create your power hour. Okay. Because having your power hour set, knowing exactly what it is that you're going to be doing in your time and being intentional, right? You know, I was going to say that you guys know I was going to say that create your power hour. You got to make sure you're intentional about your time because that is what's going to ensure that you get the things done that you've got to get done in your business. Okay. We all know the secret formula for being successful in this business, right? It's the three vital behaviors. It's, um, being proof the product works. It, it's inviting, um, and it's personal development. Okay. So you have got to make sure that you're intentional about getting those things done and making sure that you have your power hour set is going to help you make that happen. Along with that, make sure you're setting your business hours. Okay. Some of you might have the same business hours every day. Maybe it's because you work your full-time job from nine to five. You're only able to get power hour in from six to 7 AM. And then you get another one in from nine to 10 PM after your kids go to bed or something. Um, or maybe you, uh, stay home or maybe you work from home or maybe you're a stay at home mom or whatever whatever. And you're kind of, your, your business hours have to fluctuate when your kids go to, um, you know, have their nap throughout the day or something, you know, whatever. Um, you've got to just have some sort of a schedule or a plan for yourself. And if you are one of those people who has more of a flexible schedule or you have more time in your day, make sure you watch my, um, watch my call about the power of productivity because I kind of create um, a plan for those of you who maybe need to create those business hours for yourself because your, your day is more flexible. Okay. So make sure you go watch that call. And last, you've got to commit to being a business owner. You've got to work from your lists. Okay. If you're not working from lists and you're just kind of going willy nilly into your business every day, you're not doing it right. Ugh, I'm just going to call you out and say that right now. Okay. You got to make sure you're working from a contact list. You got to make sure you're working from um, your daily to do list and you are just being intentional and being productive with your time because it's very easy to waste time you guys it's so easy to waste time especially in this business okay we work on freaking social media for god's sakes it's very easy to waste time so you've got to make sure if time is an issue for you if you're busy you are doing this when you're working your full-time job you've got to be intentional you've got to make sure that you're using your time wisely and you're not just screwing around scrolling a facebook news feed okay work from less get more done in less time Okay. You got to make time for things like this, the team call, the national wake up call. Um, you got to make time and you got to invest in getting to events. I said that once I'm going to say it again. Okay. Summit super Saturday, the team triceps retreat coming up. I mean, platinum edge. I'm not saying you got to go to all these, but you got to think about which ones you are going to make happen in your business this year, you guys, because you've got to get to events. It's just a huge part. Um, I really think that getting to events has helped made a huge difference in my business. I mean, there's no other way um, really to say it. So I want you to put yourself in Melanie Metro's shoes right now. Okay. I know most of you guys are like, heck no, I'm not going for top coach. That's crazy town. And I don't care if you're going for top coach or not, whatever. Melanie Metro is just a freaking mom from Pennsylvania with two little boys and a husband. And you know what I mean? She's just a normal person. How do you think that she treats her business though? Can you guys think about if you were to just 
go into your day the same 24 hours that Melanie Metro or Beyonce or anybody else in this world has the same 24 hours if you treated your business like a business and the amazing things that could happen, okay? She's not super human, super person, okay? She doesn't have more time than we do. She has the exact same amount of time. She probably has freaking less time than I do, let's be real. With two kids, I can't even imagine. But all I'm saying is, how do you think that she treats her business? What if you were to treat your business the same way that she did? Okay. Can you imagine the things that could happen, the, the changes that could happen in your business um, over the course of 2016 if you did that? Okay. So making sure you're committing to being a business owner is a huge part of this. Okay. So now getting into the action items, you guys, number seven, you got to create your vision board for 2016. Okay. So I know I talked about a vision, but now I mean putting that together on a vision board, making something visual that you actually see and can look at to help you. Um, like I said, during those times where maybe you don't feel like getting things done or you feel like slacking or you're, you've been in a funk or your motivation's been down or whatever. Those things are going to help you move forward. Um, it's, of course, it's so great to have your vision in your head, but having a visual reminder also is going to help you as well. Okay. So first off, look back at those 10 goals. Okay. That's going to be a, basically your roadmap for your vision board. Look at your vision that you wrote out. Okay. Like I said, um, if you haven't already go watch that team call, the team triceps call about creating your vision and, you know, make that into something visual. What does that look like to you? Because I think that if you make it something that's visible, you're never going to forget it. You're never going to forget why you're going to do this. And I'm telling you guys this right now. I'm sorry. I know that, that 2016 is a new fresh slate and a fresh start. But you guys, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You know that we all had struggles and things that we screwed up and hard times this year, right? I don't know about you guys, but I struggled big time several times this year. And you know what? We're going to struggle again in 2016. We're never not going to. So you've got to make sure that you have that that thing that's going to help you push forward even when you don't want to. Because I'm telling you, that's the difference between the successful coaches and the ones that aren't successful. The successful coaches keep going in times when it's hard or where things aren't working or when you feel like you're spinning your wheels. The successful coaches keep pushing through those times and they use their vision to keep them going, okay? And the the non-successful ones are the ones that give up, the ones that quit and that um, just say, nope, it's not happening, whatever, this is too hard, um, and they throw it away, okay? So I know none of you guys are, are that person because you guys are still here. You're on our team. You're, you're, you're on this call because you want to make things happen. I know that's not you. So you got to make sure that your goals are visible, okay? And what I mean by that, um, create a vision board, like I said, and create it like a background on your phone. So get, um, get the photo grid app or, um, Insta collage app. There's a bunch of, um, collage apps that you can get, um, from the app store, but you know, create a little, uh, a uh, picture vision board background for your phone. Okay. Put it as a sticky note, write your goals on a sticky note in your car, put it right on your steering wheel or put it on your bat, put it in your bathroom or, um, next to your bed, right when you're falling asleep or on your nightstand. Okay. Your Vision is what's going to keep you going. So make sure that you see it all the time, you guys. <clears throat> Number eight, okay? Figure out your quarterly workout and personal development plan. And when I, the reason why I said quarterly is because I think it's good to kind of set um, set your workout plan and your personal development plan every three months. I just think that's a good amount of time because you can kind of like foresee what it is that you have going on. Um, you know, what you want to commit to, what, what things, maybe trips you got going on, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I think that, um, doing it quarterly is a good way, revising it every quarter and, you know, making sure that you're creating a plan for yourself every single quarter for both your workouts and personal development, because those are two vital behaviors for a reason, you guys. Okay. We talked about having a business owner mindset, showing up to your business every single day, being intentional with your business. Okay. So now you've got to make sure that you're being intentional with not just the invite, invite, invite part, but also the, the workout and um, being a product of the product and your personal development part. Okay. Once again, I'm saying it over and over because I think it's super important. If you're not intentional, it won't happen. Right. So how many times have we said, Oh, I think I might start that program or I'm just going to do like a little hybrid of this or that, or, Oh yeah, I'm going to start on Monday, but I'm don't really have a challenge group I'm growing or, go, or, or joining. I'm just going to kind of start doing it and then kind of fall off track. Right. That's called not being intentional. That's called not having a plan and not being intentional with your workouts and with your personal development. Okay. So make sure that you have a plan for yourself. So what programs are you going to be doing? Okay. Maybe look at the new programs that are coming out. Um, 22 minute hard hardcore is coming out. 
Um, maybe you want to figure out, hopefully we're going to find out soon with the surge or super Saturday when that's coming out, but then you can figure out, okay, I'm going to start 22 minute hardcore on this date. So that gives me enough time to get one round of max 30 done between January and, you know, March or whatever, you know, just sit down with the calendar, look at what it is that you want to achieve or the programs that you want to be doing and set up a plan for yourself. Okay. And along with that, make sure you're in a challenge group or at least running a challenge group because being in a challenge group, having a support and accountability, being basically practicing what you preach is going to help you not just be successful in your business, but be successful with your personal results. Okay. And, and hit those personal goals that you set for yourself. Okay. Um, personal development plan. How many books do you plan to read? Do you want to do one book a month? Are you like a crazy fast reader? Do you want to do two bucks, books a month? I don't know. Um, you know, what are, what are the books that you want to, want to read over the next three months? Okay. Um, maybe you haven't thought about it, but that's super important that you think about those things. You know, what are the things that you're struggling with or that you want to work on or that you want to get stronger at? Um, is it going to be on audio or do you need to get on Amazon prime and set in an order for your books and, you know, get some, some paperback books sent to you. Um, and events that is included in this. Okay. Like I said before, which events are you going to invest in this year? Because you guys, you have to. I mean, I know that's crazy, but um, no, it's not crazy. I mean, I know that that might sound like harsh and you might be like, well, I'm not even making any money. How can I invest back in my business when I'm not even making any? You guys, like that's the whole point. If you want to start to see your business grow, you've got to get to events. You've got to invest in your business, okay? It might seem a little backwards, but you know what? That's the way that this works. You got to start by putting in a lot of work, um, putting in that investment. But I'm telling you, if you just stay consistent with this stuff and stay intentional, it's going to flip flop and your investment will be, um, it, your return on your investment will be so incredibly worth it. Okay. I can tell you right now, um, a year and a half later investing, um, as a brand new Emerald coach, not even knowing what the hell summit was, but I bought my ticket to summit and bought my hotel for, for summit, not knowing what it was because I just saw that Sarah Tri said it was super important to my business and I knew I wanted my business to grow. So I made that investment and it's, it was a lot of money. I didn't have it. I had to put some stuff on credit cards, but I can tell you two years later that that was the best, one of the best investments I made in my business. Okay. So I'm telling you, you're not going to regret it. So which ones are you going to invest in next year? Um, like I said before, we've got the triceps retreat coming up. Okay. We've got, um, we've got the summit coming up. Of course, uh, we've got platinum edge. Of course, we've got all the super Saturdays. I mean, there's always going to be events going on. So you've got to make sure, um, look at a calendar, map out when they are, figure out a plan. Maybe you want to get to all of the events. That would be awesome. You guys, how kick ass would that be? What if you made um, enough in your business? throughout the year so that you could get to every single event. That would be so awesome. Make a game plan for yourself, be intentional about it, and you can so do it, okay? So figure that out. Okay, number nine, what kind of coach do you plan to be in 2016? You've gotta determine that, okay? I talked about this already, but you've gotta create that, either that business um, builder mindset or hobby coach or discount coach mindset, okay? And if you're not being intentional about any of them, you're gonna fall into a discount coach, hobby coach mindset, okay? You can say you're a business builder all you want, but if you're not being intentional about those, all the things that we talked about, setting these goals, creating mini goals, action plans, game plans for yourself, helping your team do the same, um, you're not you're, you're not being a business builder. You're being a hobby coach. You have a one foot in mentality. And I'm telling you guys right now, if you have a one foot in mentality with your business, you're not going to get very far. You can't set huge, crazy, awesome, scary goals that you're going to make happen in 2016, no matter what, if you're going to be one foot in one foot out. I mean, that's just, that's just how it works. Um, so just know that and just make, make sure that you're aware of that when you're setting these goals, if you want to make big things happen, they 100% can, but it's going to take work. It's going to take you being intentional and it's going to take time over the next, um, 12 months and making 2016 awesome. Okay. So you've got to make sure that your mindset is right going into the year. Okay. Make sure you're intentional about the type of coach that you're going to be. And last but not least, make sure you're sharing your goals to keep yourself accountable. I know this is going to freak you out, but Hey, you guys like this just basically tells it all. I found this, um, I found this image and I had to share, set a goal, tell the world and walk your talk. Amen. I can't say it any better. It's, it's, that's just what it is. You guys set your goal 
create your action plan, use all of this info that I just gave you, tell the world, post it on your Facebook, post it on your Instagram. I'm telling you right now, it's scary as hell. It's scary as hell, even to write them out and admit it to yourself that you want to be a 15 star diamond coach or a five star diamond coach or whatever your goal is, but tell the world, I'm telling you that it's the best way to keep yourself accountable and make yourself work towards that goal. Because once it's out there, it really becomes a huge part of your vision because you don't want to make uh, yourself, you, you don't want to want to drop the ball on those goals, right? You want to make sure that you are walking your talk. You're not just saying these things, but you're backing it up. Okay. So make sure you share your goals. Cause I think that that's super important. Okay. So let me go back and reflect on all 10 of our tips for making 2016 the best yet. Okay, you guys? So number one, reflect back on 2015 and the things that you did achieve, the things you didn't achieve, and what you want to change. Recommit to your vision, okay? And if you haven't created a vision for yourself and your team, make sure you do that ASAP and recommit to it. Because having your vision is going to help you move forward with your goals in 2016. Okay. Revise your goals from last year. Okay. Or this year, I should say it's not 2016 yet. Revise your goals from 2015 and create those 10 goals. You guys, um, using those five categories that I shared, health, personal, um, business, financial relationship. Okay. Make sure you cover all of those things. Determine your non-negotiable goals for 2016. What are you going to make happen? No matter what, make sure you're intentional about that because that is going to be super important. If you want to make those non-negotiables actually happen every single month. Okay. Create a monthly, uh, create monthly mini goals. Okay. Break it down, reverse engineer your goals, create it into more manageable, small goals that you can achieve so that you don't get overwhelmed by the big goals that you set for yourself. Develop your business plan. Okay. If you don't have your contact list in order, if you don't have your power hour to-do list, if you don't have power hour set for yourself, make sure you get all that stuff together and get your business plan together because it's really important for you in 2016. If you want to be intentional to have that. Okay create your vision board for 2016. Make sure that you have a visual, whether it's just writing them down on a piece of paper and um, sticking that, like I said, on your, you know, driver's, driver's, uh, what is it? What, steering wheel. Why am I just, I'm retarded right now. Steering wheel um, on your car or whether that is creating a background on your phone. I don't care. Create a visual of some sort so that you can continue to see what your vision is and what your goals are for the year. Figure out your game plan for your quarterly goals as far as your workouts and your personal development because once again if you do not do this they will not happen you're going to be willy-nilly all over the place and having a plan is going to help you be successful in your personal health and fitness goals determine what kind of coach you're going to be next year okay are you going to be a one foot in one foot out coach or are you going to be all in and be intentional okay share your 10 goals and keep yourself accountable. I know it's scary. It's going to scare you. Um, and it's going to be, you know, nerve wracking, but you guys, I'm telling you, once you put it out there and you make your 10 goals real, it's just going to help you push for them even harder. Okay. So now with all of that, I'm going to stop my screen share. That was, um, or those were my 10 tips for you guys, um, for making 2016 awesome. Um, I don't know. I didn't see, don't think anybody had any questions, but if anybody has any questions, please, um, go ahead ahead and, and type them in the chat box. Otherwise, um, you know, you guys, I'm really excited for the new year. I'm excited for you guys to all, like I said, get started with a fresh slate um, and really, you know, get going in the new year and get started right. Because I think that, you know, I, we've all been struggling. I've been struggling in my own, you know, personal health and fitness goals and my personal, um, my personal business goals. And so to be able to have a clean slate in 2016, is just gonna be awesome. So hopefully all of this was helpful for you guys in um, creating a plan and knowing how you can really make 2016 awesome and really make it great. But if nobody has any questions, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, but thank you all for being on tonight. I hope this was helpful. And um, I hope that you guys all take this stuff and put it into action. Okay. Don't just listen and write this stuff down in your notebook. Actually take action on it. Go implement all these things. Go do the 10 steps. Go down each and every one of them and do them. You guys be intentional about 2016 and make sure that you are actually getting this stuff done because I think that that's really what's going to set you apart from the unsuccessful coaches that don't make their goals happen. Because I know that each and every single one of you watching this call, watching um, watching the recording, are all going to make your goals happen, okay? So um, I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you for um, being on live, and I will talk to you guys all soon, okay? Thank you so much.